Welcome to the Brand Sand Woodwind Shop. It has been a while since I've done a video on this French horn, and it is not because I've forgotten about it or given up on it. It is because I've been working on the lathe so that I can work on the valves on the French horn. Today I'm just going to give you a brief update on the horn and tell you what's going on. In previous videos I mentioned that I have a lathe, but I do not use it very much. That is because my lathe was not very precise, and also I do not know that much about how to use a lathe. So over the last few weeks I've been working hard on learning more about the lathe, and also making the lathe tighter so that I can work on valves. Because valves have very close tolerances, the lathe needs to be very tight. One of my viewers, who is a professional machinist, saw that I was struggling with the lathe. He gave me a call and we talked for a while and he gave me a lot of good ideas about how to use the lathe better. The way I'm going to hold the valves in the lathe is I have a live center that I'm going to put in the tailstock and that spins with the valve as the valve spins and then there's a dead center that goes in the headstock like that and then you put the valve in between that. To make the valve turn there is what's called a lathe dog you hook the lathe dog onto the part that you're working on and then it spins the part around so that you can work on it. This one is too large to do valves so I'm going to have to make a different one for that. The problem that I ran into though is on the headstock. I'm going to show you the problem right here. This is a dial indicator and each of those little lines is one thousandth of an inch. So if you turn this around, this should be, it, the needle should stay in the same spot. But as you can see, it is not staying in the same spot. It's about oh, four thousandths of an inch off. Four thousandths does not sound like a lot, but when you're working on a valve, it's a huge amount. I tried to figure out what was wrong with this. The headstock is very tight. It does not move at all, but the dead center was off by quite a bit. If I take the dial indicator and move it right over to the point, it still is off. Actually, it's off a little bit farther. So what I did is I took the dial indicator, I hooked it up to the compound rest, and I set the angle for approximately where I thought it was supposed to be. And then by moving this back and forth and see how the dial goes, you can get the exact right angle with the compound rest. Once I had the right angle, I took this off and hooked up the tool to here. Then I chucked a piece of steel into the lathe, and I cut the same taper as on the dead center. And then I removed the chuck from the lathe, and I made a little mark on the headstock, and I also made a little mark on the tool, so that I can line up those two marks. And then I reset the angle on the compound rest, and I cut a point in the tool. Now when I line up the marks on the tool and the headstock on my new dead center that I made, it should line up perfectly. Now when I turn this, the dial indicator is right on. It's not moving at all. But if I take the tool out and turn it 180 degrees, then it's way off. So I need to make sure that I line up the marks, and if I do line up the marks, it should be about perfect. I just got that tool made late last night, so it has not given me a lot of time to work on the valves yet, so I'm hoping to start working on those next week. The person who called me up suggested I get a Mighty Mag and a second dial, so now I have the two dials and the two magnets so that I can measure things from two different directions, and that should help a lot too. I just got my orders in from Allied and Freeze Tools, and I'm going to show you what I got. This stuff came from Allied Supply, and that's where I get most of my parts for instruments. And let's see what's in the bag. I got some box Stradivarius trumpet parts. These are the washers that go on the top of the valve caps. And I also got the third slide stoppers. I go through a lot of those. There are a lot of people who lose those parts, so I try to keep a whole bunch of those in stock. And some jeweler saw blades. I break a lot of those. I got some razors, 100 razors. I go through a lot of razors too. King Sousaphone tuning bits. I had someone order those. Box Stradivarius third slide stopper. Saxophone pad resonators. I got a few of those. Uh, some more jeweler saw blades. Let's see, what else do I have? Some, uh, some model water key parts. Uh, saxophone thumb rests. Washers for rivets for repairing cases. Valve stems for a trumpet. Some more model water key parts. Valve springs, valve guides, trombone slide bumpers. This is the really exciting one here. This is my spot plater. 
I have the silver solution and the nickel solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to build up the plating on the face of the valve and then I'm going to grind that down so that it fits into there. Or at least that's what I'm going to experiment with. You can see that this is not the rotor for the double horn that I'm working on. This is from one of my instruments. I'm going to experiment on one of my instruments first, see how it works, and then work on my customer's instrument. I'm also working on overhauling this old coronet, and there are many places on here where it's missing some silver plating. So I'm going to use the silver solution to replate those areas. So here's the box with the plug-in part in it. And I'm not sure exactly how this works. It's probably fairly simple, I would guess. I'm going to take my instructions home and read that tonight. For freeze, I got some cleaner and some cork cement, uh, some trumpet and French horn cleaning brushes. And then I got a flute head swedging die. Mine broke, so I had to order another one. Um, let's see. Oh, and then a whole bunch of saxophone pads. Uh, a torch. My torch died. It still works, but I have to push the button about oh, 20 times for it to light. So I ordered another one to save me some time. And my hot heat gun broke, so I ordered another one of those too. I've been talking to the owner of this French horn, and he has done some more research on it. What we do know about this instrument is that it was bought around 2000 on eBay in many little pieces. And then it sat around for 16 years. My customer bought it in a lot of little pieces in 2016. Then he had it shipped over to Pope to solder it back together. And Pope put it back together and made it look like it does right now. After it was put back together, he said that he really liked how it played. The only problem is that the valves were really loose. And here's a picture of what it looked like before it was put back together. Then about two months ago, it was sent to me to see if I could tighten up the valves. And I said, I will give it a try. The best that we can figure out is that it was made about 100 years ago. And it was about the time when they were just experimenting with double horns. On the bell of the horn, it has the leaves and then the bow engraving in it. And it says... Made by R. Wunderlich, Chicago. There were two Wunderlichs who made horns. There's R. Wunderlich, which I believe is Richard, and then there's C. Wunderlich, which is Carl. Richard Wunderlich did not make most of his instruments. Most of them were made by somebody else, and we believe that this one was probably made by Geyer. We also think that it probably was custom made for a particular player. We do not know who that was. But just some of the things about the way it's made and the way that the tubing is, and also the fact that it has the fourth rotor rather than a piston, it makes us think that it probably was custom made for somebody. Most of the old Wunderlich double horns had a piston fourth valve and not a rotor. The owner of the horn said he found an article that usually what they did when they made a double horn is that they would take two single horn rotors and then on one of them they'd cut off the top, the other one they'd cut off the bottom, and then they would braze them together. And there is a brazing mark right there, right along the middle. So I guess that is what happened to this instrument. If you want to read more about it, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to that article. Obviously, they do not do this anymore. They just make double rotors out of one piece of brass now. Also, judging from the wear on the veils, we can tell that this instrument was used a lot over the years. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing about a little bit of history of this instrument. Next week, I hope to work on the valves of this instrument. Feel free to leave any comments that you might have. And if I got anything incorrect, please feel free to leave a comment too.